Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Next up, we have the National Institute of Design from India. So come on out, you guys. Is this a good call? Will be. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Akshan, and this is Shreya. We're from the National Institute of Design in India. And we're here to present our project, Policity. So Policity basically is an application which is designed to create a citizen-centric and transparent, po transparent policing system in India. Uh, the incidence of crime in India recently has really increased, and it's almost like the police doesn't care about the citizens. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, the incidence of crime in India has really increased, and it's almost like the police doesn't care about the citizens, and uh, and the citizens do not have any kind of trust in the policing system. So we wanted to look at this from a design perspective and figure out what we could do to make things better in our country. Our first step was to speak to citizens themselves and understand what they thought of the police. So when we spoke to them, a lot of them shared their experiences of uh, harrowed experiences. Of, they found the police to be unnerving and intimidating, and they did not want to approach the police at any point. Uh, so uh, we also spoke to officials in the authorities and uh, got an insight about how things work for them and what are the kind of pressures that the police themselves face. And uh, based on that, we developed a, a video that explains the present context of uh, India, Indian policing system. A lot of jargon is Indian in this. For example, things like chai pani represents bribery in this case. What rules is power and what the common man needs is justice. The Indian police services, with only 130 policemen per 1 lakh residents, promise to help but instills fear and distrust in the citizen. This is Rajesh, 24 years old. He has just moved to Delhi from Chennai for better job opportunities and a smoother way of life. Rajesh speaks only English and Tamil and has no clue about Hindi, the most widely spoken language in the north. Meet Dharam Singh, a constable at the Dwarkanagar police station, who can't speak anything but Hindi. He has been on duty for the past 22 hours, thanks to the politician visiting the neighboring area. His wife has peeved at him, his daughter wants him home, and not to forget, Dharam needs to update all the paperwork in the station register, the crime records, and last week's case diary. But all he really wants is some peace of mind. Rajesh's bag containing important documents has gotten stolen from where he is staying. He has no idea what to do and wonders if he should even approach the police. He rushes to the nearest police station only to be told that the scene of crime does not lie under their jurisdiction and he should go someplace else. He tries other stations but all in vain. When he finally manages to make it to the right one, he finds it appalling that there is a huge rush and not enough policemen. The only remotely available policeman is Dharam Singh, who is annoyed with the loan that he owes that local biggie for getting him into the service. Not to mention the sheer number of people and their problems. Finally, Rajesh meets Dharam Singh and starts speaking in English. Disgruntled, Dharam looks at him with sheer annoyance. Rajesh wants to talk to somebody who understands his problem and can assure him of some help. He knows that he has to file a first investigation report, but does not know how to do it. Dharam tells Rajesh that he will listen to him only if he pays for his chai pani. Rajesh refuses. Dharam suggests Rajesh to change his statement from stolen to lost to avoid the hassle of filing an FIR. Instead, he should just write an application and get it over with. Rajesh refuses, but Dharam insists. Rajesh is helpless. He realizes that he knows nothing and the police will not help him without influence or pressure. Either way, he knows it's a lost cause and so he leaves the police station. 
As for Dharam Singh, he still has 20 kilos of paperwork to deal with. We now had three very important questions to answer. How do we create a better relationship between the citizens and the local police? How do we bring in accountability and transparency in the Indian policing system? And how do we ensure that policemen are more efficient and, re and we can reduce their workload? What we realize is that the only way that we could build trust in the minds of the citizens for the police is by creating services that are citizen-centric. Uh, this would then enable the police to also uh, help the citizens through the entire process. So then we created this concept called Policity, which is based on our insights. There are that p people usually don't know where to go or what to do when they approach a police station. There is a lack of timely and relevant information. And because people are ill-informed, it is easy for the police to misguide them. There's a lack of clarity on jurisdiction. That is that people have to hop from one place to another before they can actually get to the right police station to get their job done. We also realized that there's no platform for sharing uh, experiences and stories that people have faced with the police. And we thought this could really be nurtured into better service delivery models. And of course, there's an excess of workload and redundant paperwork which still exists in the police stations in India. So while we were building our concept, again, we looked at three key factors. Firstly, that uh, when something like this is given, there should not be an excessive overload of information happening. Secondly, in this case, when uh, the person is filing a first investigation report, very contextual in India, uh, he has to be guided through the entire process. And consequently, the tone of voice in the concept should be very reassuring and comforting so that he's not unnerved at any point. So now we've got a video that explains the concept. Uh, it's called Policity. So what Policity essentially does is it takes the user through the entire process of filing a complaint with the police. So for example, this is Neha. She was walking down a busy street in India and her bag was stolen by two bikers. She logs into the Policity app. The app tracks her location and tells her what the closest police station which will handle her case. She then can report that incident. She's authorized using the unique identification number which would be available for citizens across the country. Now she can enter the entire details of what happened. So she's guided through the process. She's given relevant information at that particular point about her complaint. Once she enters the details, she gets information about the law and procedure regarding that complaint. So in this case, it's a theft that she's recording. Uh, she can also see details of the police station that she would be going to, so she now has a better understanding of what exactly happens there. We also realize that people want to go to police stations in groups because it boosts their confidence and they can face the police. Uh, citizens can also get updates about their complaints because so that uh, to avoid the hassle of going back and forth between police stations. In the case at which the, uh, the citizens go to the police stations and uh, if the policemen try to bribe them or there's some sort of misbehavior, now citizens can flag them using this application. We also have a multilingual support to support the 30, 35 different languages that are existent in our country. So what happens is that at a community level, people can now see what's exactly happening. So uh, police stations are mapped across the city. Uh, jurisdictions are now available to citizens. They can see which police station handles which jurisdiction. There's a citywide crime mapping that's available. Uh, petty and small crimes, everything is visible. Comparisons of police stations can be done by citizens so that they know. Corruption levels are, vi are visible. A number of complaints filed by citizens can now be seen and even experiences that people have can be shared and viewed by citizens. So what happens when a whole community starts, you know, uh, uh, when the app starts aggregating data from the whole community about crime and corruption levels and police station details is that it helps the entire system in three ways. One is that people now can make better decisions about where to send their kids to school maybe, or you know, which locality to move into. Secondly, it helps hire police officials to make better decisions about where to deploy their forces or understand what kind of crime is uh, pertinent in particular areas. And thirdly, and most importantly, it gives the citizens of our country a voice and an evidence to ask for a better policing system. 
And this is essentially how we dream of a free and a safe society that could be created with a better public and the police partnership coming together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was a really lovely video. Uh, very impressive, very well, very engaging. Um, um, I, I imagine this could be used in cities all over the world. Um, I think um, you know, it, there are benefits for it in, in all sorts of, for all sorts of reasons in, in different cities. But um, watching, I was wondering, um, what's to prevent people um, abusing it and kind of subverting the system to maybe, if they have a grudge against the police, to suggest there's bribery in particular districts, for example, or, or, or to get back at a particular police officer? That, that is a consideration that we had to take that, I mean, it is very evident that the people might have grudges against the police. But the situation right now is such that there is a complete imbalance in the power equation between the police and the citizens. So it is very essential that at least higher police officials know what is happening at the ground level. And that can only be done when, when community perception comes into the entire uh, ecosystem. I'm sorry, did, did that answer your question? No. Um, I'm, I love the setup of the, um, of the animation at the beginning. And I'm wondering if um, it really needs to be uh, a mobile app like this. Isn't this more just about uh, trying to uh, get um, a, a service that exposes and helps people? Can you just talk about why you made the scenario of the mobile app? Yeah, so this is a mobile app. Uh, it, it's actually a multi-platform thing, as we thought about it. The mobile app in specific, so that you can guide the citizens through the entire process of filing a complaint. And it becomes personalized, where you have to fill in, fill in your UID or unique identification. And it's your complaint, right? So then it has to be personal. But also, we realize that a lot of people do not yet have access to internet on the smartphones in the country. So we thought that this could also be uh, used as an application for public kiosks. Maybe in public spaces, if you installed ATMs or like you know post offices or uh, information centers, if this could be an application that could be used there. So, so, so first, I, I, I agree with uh, Tony. The both the video, the animated one and the video, were, I loved the contrast in the two, and I loved the, they were, were, it was just good storytelling, so thank you. Um, the other thing, though, that I think was interesting is that you took, you considered the policeman in some sense also as a yeah. victim. And instead of just pointing the finger saying, you guys are bad, and, and so you, you were trying to look at the full ecosystem and the players. And I, I just want to say, I think that that shows the maturity in, in, of, of, of thought that actually is non-confrontational and actually therefore has some some hope of success. So I thought that was a that, that was really nice work. It, it, that was even as good as the animation. Thank you, oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Beautiful project. All right.